Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies and today I'm going to take a look at cleaning and servicing my 8 scale off-road buggy. In this case it is the Caracal. So it's done a hard day's racing, it can apply to bashes too. So these are just a couple of simple steps that I take to make sure that it's tip top and ready for A the next race, B the next bashing session. So let's get it out. So here I have it in the Rubik's well bag, really really good buggy transporter. Now I've taken the wheels off because we don't need them on in the bag, put them to the side and here we have the Caracal buggy. Oh. Nice and heavy, still got the 4S battery in it from racing on Sunday. Okay, so if we take a close look at it, you can see here that it's obviously been a little bit wet, a bit of a wet track. Um, very typical of your sort of track use and dirt. It did have a few good runs and really enjoyed it. So this is about servicing and maintaining it, making sure I can get the best out of it and catching anything that's gone wrong start by taking the body off. Now I usually start from the outside in, hence why the wheels are off. Take the body off, we'll put that to the side because I'll give that a little clean later with some detergent and I'm going to go ahead here and take the wing off. Oh actually before I do that I'll run through with you a couple of the tools and what I'll be using today. So I'm just going to put the buggy to the side for a minute. Okay so here I have my nine steps toolkit. Now a good little toolkit is paramount of importance for when you're working on and servicing your RC machines. So this should hopefully have everything that I need to get the, the job done on this. Got mainly our, our two mil driver and two and a half mil driver being all hex head components. We've got a couple of cleaning brushes here. Uh, this is an Aramax unit, but any quality paint brush will do. We've got an old toothbrush. We've got the nine steps hobby knife. Um, and another old cleaning brush I've got to help get the muck off. In here I've got a little bit of XTR thread lock for taking any fasteners out and putting them back in. Um, and a couple of additions is a JPRC soft jaw plier, shock plier if I work on the shocks or anything like that. Um, some of the cleaning agents I'll be using, WD-40, really, really good. Don't use it so much as a lubricant, but it's a really good sort of de degreaser and cleaning product. Um, and I've also got like a water-based soap detergent here. In this case, it's simple green, but anything that's safe to plastics will be fine in this application. Okay, so let's get the buggy back. Now let's start, I suppose, by taking the battery out. That'll be the first thing we do when we get home from the track, is taking the battery out that's had a run. Now the first thing I will do when I get home is always get my, in this case it's a nine steps battery, is get my lipos out of the car um, and put them straight on the charger and put them all into storage. Might be a week, might be two weeks, could be a couple of months until they're used again. But it's always a really good practice and policy to put your lipos into storage mode and most of your digital chargers will do it. We'll put that to the side. Okay, and now we can get to cleaning it. So first thing I suppose that we're going to do is take the wing off and get that out of the way because while that's there it's going to make service in the back of the car quite big and cumbersome. So a couple of two mil headed screws here and these caracals are a fantastic buggy, really really good, performed really well in the open EP8 class on 4S had plenty of power to compete. They are actually 6S capable so look out for those tests in the future. Get this wing out of the way. You can see here how much room that we've opened up. Now what I'm going to do, because I can see that these have got nylocks, is I'm actually just going to put this screw back in. And sometimes it's a good practice to put your screws back in because it will in fact ensure that we are not losing them. Okay, put that in. That's going to secure it. Now the next thing I will do is I will take the shock absorbers off. Now the reason I do that is again to save me scraping any dirt and muck into the car. Now you can see here it's got quite a bit of dirt and mess around the rear suspension. I don't want to be dusting that all over the, the rear shock absorbers, potentially damaging the o-ring seals. 
Now, one of the things that's fantastic about these caracals is the way that they work and they're really engineered very well. So they're really a pleasure to work on. Um, and getting to know your buggy is really good. Don't be scared to have a go. And if you don't get it right the first time, you can always just try it again. Now I need a two and a half mil. Now you notice on this caracal, we've actually got different color fasteners here. Now it's very common on competition 1.8 buggies to have reverse threads. So you can bet that the silver screw is in fact gonna be reverse thread or left hand thread. So I'll actually have to do that up to undo it. And that's to ensure that the torque forces on the lower shock don't actually undo the screw when you're taking part in off-road action. So it's actually a really clever feature to ensure that your shocks don't come loose. That said, I'm putting the screws back in situ just so I remember in fact where they come from. But a really handy tip is that they are color coded. Black being the natural color and the chrome plated being reverse. Making sure that it all goes back in the same hole. So that is the rear shocks off of the car. We'll put them to the side. We'll do the same with the front end. Five and a half mil. Take these off. We'll leave the suspension bush there. Again, so. And the handy part about putting the screws back where they came from, even just a couple turns, is if you're doing this repair over a couple of days or get interrupted or it might be something that you might not return to for a week or two, you know exactly what screw goes where without having to consult the instructions. A little bit of trouble with the suspension bush is the last one and it's in the shock. So I'm just gonna take it out to ensure that I don't lose it like so. Really handle the little tool that I just used there. That was one of our nine steps gizmo. Really good plastic tool. Good for poking and prodding without scratching and damaging anodized surfaces. Now this is a really good case in point. I've got a blunt hobby knife here. Now I can see that I've got a bit of dirt and muck in this screw. So what I'm gonna do is actually scrape it out. It's always good to have an old hobby knife for that because otherwise you're just gonna wreck your good quality Allen keys. So just give it a little scrape like that and hit it with the toothbrush and that will ensure that my driver will sit in there nicely allowing me to undo the fastener. Again on the front it's got the black and chrome bolts indicating that the chrome one will be reverse thread, left hand thread. You can see by these adjustments I'm also making sure that the the shock mounting position goes back in the same way that it come out. Bit of dirt and muck in this one, like so. Again, got Nan's favorite old toothbrush there. Get that dirt out. And that's just gonna prolong the life of my tools and also the fixtures themselves. Oops, as I drop it. Another really good to service your RC cars is this work mat that I've got. Apart from saving the table service from getting damaged, it actually saves your stuff from bouncing away quite as much as on the floor and gives you a nice clean area. Okay, so now that I've got the, the dampers off the car, I'm gonna put the actual buggy to the side and we'll get to work on those separately. So, I'll just start by, we can even zoom up on this. I'll start by taking the spring retainer off the bottom like so, putting it to the side. And I'll just do these one at a time to ensure none of the components get left. And these caracal have these beautiful boots and they protect the shock, shock shaft from any debris. Got myself a nice little rag here. At this point as well, I can also check the 
tightness of the cartridge, which is really nice. And the, on the top, super nice. Nothing coming loose there. Give it a quick wipe over. And uh, while I'm here, I will also give it a dust off. And while it's in my hand, I'll also be checking for a really nice smooth operation. Checking the oil level. It's all pretty good. Nice and smooth, indicating that it doesn't have a bent shock shaft and any, there's no physical damage and there's no pools of oil around it. I'll put this boot back on before we go any further to make sure we're not introducing any dirt. I'll give the spring a bit of a wipe over. Again, just the old cotton cloth is fine here. And then the spring retainer. These spring retainers, they are ported and have holes in them, but if they do get full up and chockers with mud, that will also start to impact the performance of the damper unit. Now we've got it at this point, I'll just give my rag here a little bit of a spray with cleaner and just give it a final polish to make sure it's all looking as good as new. So we know for a fact that the damper unit is beautifully prepared and in good condition to hit the track like so. And like I said, by cleaning it and stuff, you're actually investing your, protecting your investment um, as far as keeping your buggy in really good shape, performing well. And this is the, the time when you will find if anything's damaged or worn that needs replacing. So you can make sure that you have the parts on hand. Have a look in here. Oh, get this boot off. This boot's stuck on somewhat. Nice and tight seal. Turn it inside out. Beautiful. It's beautiful black coated, diamond-like coating on these damper units. is really nice touch on these caracals. Check the cartridge. Check the top cap. And we are good. Beautiful smooth operation, no leaking of the seals. We'll put the boot back the right way around and we'll go again. Need a little bit of a helper here. There we go. Put the boot back on. There we go, now I'll give this spring a clean over. And generally a clean, well serviced buggy will outperform some old pile of mud and dirt and grit that's just holding your buggy together. A bit of a wipe over. Like so. And we'll do the same, exactly the same process to all four damper units. can see why these soft jaw pliers are really handy because they won't mark any of the, the anodizing and the metal finishes. That's also what we use on our shock shafts to avoid scratching the beautifully polished or in this case a diamond like coating on the shaft itself. Beautiful operation. You 
get all the muck out of here. Okay, last one. Looking good. Come up really good. Put these boots. This is a big part of the hobby and RC racing or bashing, playing around the backyard is actually maintaining and servicing your vehicles. There we go. Okay, so that is the four damper units done. It's time to get the buggy back and have a look at the chassis. So we'll put these to the side. We'll offer the buggy back up. Here we go. So I can see that I've visibly got a little bit of dirt around here. What I am going to do though is start by taking the dirt out of the screw heads. And like I said, I've got my favorite old hobby knife here. I have the hobby knife just for that application. I do have obviously a better hobby knife for actually cutting things. But with these really small screws and the heads, It does save you and your Allen keys and your hex drivers. So just going over, hit it with the brush, and that's going to help me get my tool in there to check and tighten all the screws. And I can see here actually that I've lost a screw, and that's pretty typical. Just here, there's a screw missing from the front mount of the center diff. And that can happen mid-race. Obviously I wasn't paying attention last time. It was actually this buggy's first ever run, so it was really good to test it out of the box exactly as it was. Super happy with how it performed on track and off and by off track i mean actually right now okay so i'm just going to get my cleaning rag i'm just going to wet it down a little bit with the the cleaner and give it a wipe over to help get this dirt off of the chassis Like so. Okay, so now is the time for me to start tightening. And actually, I actually knew that that fell out and I had one here. So judging by the other screws in there that I had out, it's a M4 by 2. 12 mil so I'm just going to put a new screw in there and check the other one now I generally don't like to use a lot of Loctite on these sorts of components because we need to ensure there we go We need to ensure that we can actually get it apart and service it. So correct torque is often more important than Loctite. So you can see I'm just going to go over now. I've got the 2.5mm driver in my hand. And 
doesn't have to be crazy tight it's always nice I feel to do it by hand you get a good feel for it and if anything it has come substantially loose the steering posts for the chassis it's good that they're nice and tight the front gearbox housing really good so that's all see how long that took that's all the two all the two and a half mils We've got the b block here that worked its way a tiny bit loose like so and nothing should be really tighter than what you can do with your your hand quite easily these ones here will be all plastic threads because if you do everything just too tight you will end up just stripping the threads and you can see by cleaning all the mud out how easy my nine steps two mil driver is going in and how positive the engagement is there we go that is the lower chassis all tidied off so now let's start at the front and again it's going to break out the old toothbrush and get to cleaning some of this mud off now with the plastics on this car i generally will use um maybe a little bit of the WD-40 and that's just for no other reason than just to make the plastic all shine as good as new but you have to get the dirt off first so you can see how easy it does come off and by putting a really light film of WD-40 on it does actually make it easier to clean next time because the dirt doesn't stick so much to the film of very light oil looks like I've lawn darted it a couple of times here Bit of a, scrape some mud off here and at this point I will we'll zoom in because it's at this point now when I would check the drive shafts over if they're straight like so you can see that there's no wobble like a banana in the front end which is really good because I did actually make a few mistakes and have a couple of big knocks with this car perfect because if we needed to take it apart further now's the time to do it while the shock's off and the wheels are off we'll zoom out again another huge advantage of having the damper units off is in fact checking the articulation and the action of the suspension as a whole that's at this point now when you would pick up whether something is bent or broken and needs further servicing or repairs before you go back on track so I like to scrape all the mud off then I'll get out the tools and check for tightness Just scrub away like so now I did mention using WD-40 or a really light oil and the reason you have to be really careful when you're using that sort of material is you actually don't want to wash that into your bearings because it will damage them WD-40 is not a great lubricant for that and you also don't want it that much but that it soaks and gets all in your pivot points because when dirt does, if dirt and dust does get attracted there, 
you can in fact attract sand and oil to the hinge pin area and the suspension points, pivot points, and create a valve grinding paste, in fact wearing everything much faster. And can see here how the suspension is um, lowering by itself, really smooth in movement. There's no notch, there's no tightness falling under its own weight, and that's with the sway bar as well. And sway bar is nice and true. The same amount that I'm picking up on the right side, the same I pick up on the left before actuation starts. Beautiful. So I just need a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten up some of these kingpin fasteners. Just looking where I put my Phillips head screwdriver. Here we go. Now these are all plastic, so you just want to be careful that they're not stripped like so they're all nice and tight even better front end is tight serviced and free moving while i'm here i will check the upper steering post mounts with my two and a half mil right here perfect lovely lovely okay I'll come over to the side of the chassis here. We'll get the long brush. Now that we've scraped all the bulk off, making our way, our way rearward on the chassis. Like so. I'm not a person that likes to use a lot of compressed air when I'm cleaning, even at the track. Um, I will just do it by hand. And by hand, I mean brush. As I feel that compressed air more often than not blows the dirt exactly where you don't want it instead of washing it away. So, I know a lot of people do love compressed air and it is very effective but you also have very little control about where the dirt is actually getting blown as opposed to just doing it a little bit of hand cleaning anything that's nice and stubborn will come right on off Okay, now we've made our way all the way to the rear end of the, the buggy. Again, start by the little stiff brush, getting all the crusty mud off. Making sure all the screw heads are nice and clean, so I will be able to check everything over for the correct torque settings making sure nothing is coming loose Okay, the front of the rear arms always gets very muddy. I get a hard time because it's actually the front wheels of this four-wheel drive car that flick all the dirt up. Get my gizmo in here. And my little scraper. Scraping out all the mud and dirt here out of this sway bar link. Oh, 
like that. Okay, now the underside. And if your buggy is a lot dirtier than this, um, you can also take it apart to clean it. But generally before I take my buggy or my off-roaders apart, I'll like to clean it anyway, because I don't want to be introducing the dirt into anywhere that it's already sort of not, if that makes sense. So once you do the initial clean off what I'm doing here, it doesn't make as much mess on your work area. If you are doing a bigger job like rebuilding diffs, um, getting the gearbox assemblies out, getting the front and rear clips off, commonly referred to as the, the modular units, what houses the front and rear gearboxes. And this isn't intended to be a rebuild, this is just a bit of cleaning and service. And by doing this, like I said, we've checked over the screws, we're taking care of our rig to ensure that we know how it's going to perform next time out. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Attacking it from another angle now. And you can see by the workspace, all the dirt left behind. wing mount here now i have to check over all these rear end screws on this car make sure nothing's coming loose or untoward and then we're pretty much right to carry on There we go. Okay, so I can put this to the side now and you can see all the rubbish and muck that we've got. Let me go and clean my service, my work mat. Let me go and clean all the rubbish off my work mat and I will be right back. Okay, so I've just given my mat a quick clean off outside. Now I bet the buggy is looking a whole lot better than it was this time 15 minutes ago. Next thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of, oh sorry, I've got to check over the screws in the back. So I'm going to check the, check the camber length, really nice. Five and a half mils nut. So solid the way that these buggies are designed, engineered, and assembled. Wing mounts. Wing mount, maybe it's a Phillips head. Two mil for the wing mount. Here we go. Okay, shock mounts. We are good. I've got this brace here. Make sure that it's attached nice and firm to the gearbox mount. Perfect, perfect, perfect. A little sway bar adjustment. All perfect. A really good place to be is when everything, other than one screw, was pretty much tight. Okay, rear drive shafts are straight, everything's nice and smooth.
Okay. Now time for a little bit of polish in the way of WD-40. So what I'll do is I'm just going to spray a little bit onto my cleaning brush, like so. Dab it off. Don't really want it to be wet. And pretty much just paint over the plastic components. Like so. Like I said, we don't want to drown the car or have it, but especially if it's going to sit on a shelf for a couple of weeks, it can protect the the plastics and the metals from any surface rust or deterioration. Especially if you've had it really wet or been in a salty area such as down at the beach or whatever can be a really good practice to put a little bit of light oil kind of product over the car. The main thing is you don't want to, like I said, drown it or get it into your bearings and stuff where it does act like a decreaser and not so much a lubricant. It's a little bit like armor roll for your dashboard in a way. Nothing better than having a good bit of pride in your RC. I just need to put a little bit more. Whoops. A bit more. Like so. Get in all these nooks and crannies. Lock to lock. Cleaning the drive shafts. And then I will effectively Turn the buggy over and do the underside of the suspension and the arms. And then at this point, we will be right to fit the shock absorbers, the damper units back up to the car, put the battery pack back in it, and then we'll generally check over the suspension. And it hasn't taken really very long to fully sort of service and clean your top end buggy. Now we can start to put reattach the damper units exactly the same way they came off my two and a half mil driver again taking note of the reverse thread make sure the shock bushes are nice how about I put that on first save it jumping out in my hand and it should go back together even easier than it come apart. Now it's all nice and clean. Great suspension movement on these. That's just an attribute to why they handle so well out on the track. Okay, top shot collar on. Oops. Just didn't line that bush up very well. No dramas. Nice composite shock bushes on these units so you can do it up really really firm and tight with very little play and it's still really free here we go this one coming together put the front shocks on really good quality high tensile fasteners on this car Reverse thread on the front right hand side and then we put this one and you can generally tell the quality of something by the ease of which it comes apart and goes back together and this caracal is definitely top end there we go it's 
suppose the last thing left to do will be to put the body and wing on and for that we need to get all this muck and mess off. Do you remember how dirty it was when we started? Just going to use the water based detergent. Give it a little wipe over. Definitely don't use a detergent that is not plastic safe. You know, it is just a polycarbonate or Lexan body shell. Um, and you don't want anything that'll eat the plastic, the paint or the stickers. And it's really, really nice sticker job that the factory has done on this caracal. A little bit of a wipe over. And this body shell should come up as good as new. Okay, look at that. Perfect. Put that aside. The wing, the wing might need a little bit more work than that. Have to get these mud spots off. A little spray with the simple green. These plastic, black plastic wings on this car, so strong, took such a beating. You've got to imagine a three and a half, four kilo buggy dropping out of the sky upside down from meters in the air, and it just came back for more. There's little to no damage whatsoever. Two mil driver, and we'll get this wing back on, wheels back on, buggy done okay Get it all nice and secure, make sure that it's in the lock nut properly. Don't want to strip it. And there we go. There is one clean buggy. That's as good as new. So, you can see here, the body's come up really good, the wings as good as new. The plastics have got that beautiful shine. We've checked over all the the nuts and bolts on the chassis effectively. We've only replaced one screw that that came out so we'll be keeping an eye on that in the future but look forward to spending a lot more time with this caracal and bringing you guys lots more tutorial videos on this and all the other eight scale buggies, eight scale buggies that we do. Well, I'm Brett from Hearns Hobbies and thanks for watching me clean my eight scale buggy.